Milos Raonic is Canada's star man, and boasting one of the fastest serves on the ATP World Tour, he's enjoying his best season to date. He's the player out of that group of emerging players I've always said, I've always thought, is the one who could be the most consistently successful at the highest level. With a change in coaching staff has come a change in style, heralding a new dawn for his all-court game. He's just got everything, Milos. He's got a fantastic serve. So many other parts of his game have, have, have improved as well. Both of them have been a significant part of the development I've made this year. They've uh, given me a much deeper understanding of what I need to do to win and how to do so. And I feel like I've improved at the same time, but I think that knowledge that you pick up through experience, through moments on court, through, through conversation, that's helped me out the most and it's really shown in my game. 2014 has seen Milos make five quarterfinals, three semifinals and two final appearances, with victory at the ATP World Tour 500 level. It's been very prosperous. Things have been going well. I'm very happy with the progress I've made and that I've continued to make consistently. So those things are definitely a positive. Little goals I've set out throughout the year I've been able to achieve and that's definitely a good thing. And I always just keep pushing myself to do better and very eagerly want to do better. A Tokyo showdown against Kei Nishikori saw Milos reach his second final of 2014. He was now in real contention to qualify for the Barclays ATP World Tour Finals in November. We've seen a lot of younger players do really well. Kei Nishikori, Milos Raonic, uh, Gregor Dimitrov. Players that now are starting to beat the best players in, in the world on a regular basis and, and get to the semi finals of Grand Slam, semi finals and finals of Masters Series 1000s. And so that's made the race a lot tougher and a lot closer and a lot more exciting for us. And I think the race historically has almost been basically two packs, hasn't it? You had the top guys, top four guys dominating, and the other four guys were pretty much the same year in and year out, but now we've got the mix up. It is very exciting to. Um to, to, to see that, that, that race to London is, is always an exciting moment and I think that to, to have the, the top eight in London, it ends the season the, the perfect way. It would be his debut appearance at the O2, so no wonder Milos Raonic is keen to finish his breakthrough season as strongly as possible. It's going to mainly come down even down to the last week in Paris, I think. The player that's able to play uh, the best tennis at this point is is obviously going to earn their right to be competing in London and you just want to be able to play these next weeks your best tennis. It's hard at this time of year, everybody's a little bit tired, but there is that extra motivation because everybody wants to be in London. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered, we head to Paris, the last chance for many before the final showdown. And we spotlight the top eight singles and doubles teams who will be battling it out at the season finale in London. Don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com and to vote for your favourite players in the 2014 ATP World Tour Awards presented by Moet and Chandon. See you next week.